Graz, capital of Austria's federal state of Styria, and in 2003, Europe's capital city of culture. Indeed, due to its geographical location, for many centuries, Graz has been a melting pot of culture. And the once splendid residential city of the Habsburgs has now found its place in the 21st century. The Schlossberg towers up to 123 meters above the city. In 1894, a rack railway was introduced in order to overcome the severity of its 60% gradient. The Romans and Celts once used the mountain as a place of ritual ceremony. Today, small pathways and pavilions make the mountain more accessible to one and all. In the 12th century, a medieval castle was built on the plateau, and in 1531, it was transformed into a mighty fortress. It served as a defense against the Turks. The bell tower once contained the fortress' harshly run prison, and the fountain-like cistern was an attempt to harness the water of the Schlossberg. The unique view across the city's red tile rooftops makes it easy to understand why the old city of Graz has been designated as a World Heritage Site, a true architectural gem of the Middle Ages. In addition to the rack railway and a glass-encased elevator within the mountain, there are also stepped pathways that lead up the slopes of the picturesque Schlossberg. The Schlossberg summit is a clock tower, the main landmark of Graz. The military tower dates back to the 13th century and obtained its characteristic design in 1569. Wooden gangways encircle the tower. The large hands of its clock face tell the time and stone crowns have been worked into the corners of the walls. The view across the old town is truly captivating. It's as though it consists of doll's houses and tiny inner courtyards. Deep in the heart of the Schlossberg that also has a tunnel, the glass elevator continues its ascent. and the stone steps that were dug into the mountainside in the last century are still used by the Schlossberg's more energetic visitors. There is a total of 260 steps. There are numerous small squares in the old town and the various monuments of emperors and kings indicate the influence that the Habsburgs had on the heart of the city. Graz boasts the largest and most well-preserved medieval city center of any German-speaking city. The historic city hall dominates the main square that has always been a popular meeting place. It was once full of market stalls and also a place of public punishment. In the centre of the square is the Erzherzog Johann Fountain and old houses and colourful facades surround the entire area. The 
Because the city is located between a river and a mountain, the city's inhabitants have always felt secure here. In one of the oldest districts of the city, squeezed in between narrow lanes and middle-class houses, is a Franciscan monastery and church. The first church was built in 1257 and further enlarged in 1515. In keeping with the religious constraints of the time, its furnishings were plain and simple. Following its destruction during the Second World War, modern windows have been added to the church's light and airy interior. Thus, its appearance differs from other religious Gothic buildings. The cloister adjacent to the church is encircled by the old monastery. Visitors can enter the building's small chapels through a cloister and reliefs depicting various saints and stone altars adorn the walls. The striking position of both church and tower is due to the fact that a tributary of the River Muir once flowed by here. Graz is also a city of Italian Renaissance design. The Landhaus is the city's most famous example of this. It originated from several buildings. The adjoining courtyard and arcades were the creation of master builder Domenico Dell'Aglio, who came from northern Italy. Arcades on three levels encircle the courtyard. In 1494, various classes united and founded a so-called Kanzlei. In 1588, it was decreed that nothing should disturb the peace here and that the drawing of daggers, bread knives and the like would be punishable by death. Close to the Landhaus, there was also an armory In 1699, the Standische Zeughaus contained more than 185,000 objects. Two early Baroque figures guard the entrance. Mars, the god of war, and Minerva, goddess of peace. The decline of Constantinople and the subjection of the Balkans by the Turks threatened the Holy Roman realm of the German nation. In times of imminent danger, the weapons that were stored here were for the protection of the local landowners. Due to the victorious Prince Eugen in around 1700, the threat of Turkish invasion came to nothing and the Zeughaus was no longer important. However, its doors have remained open to the present day.
With nearly 32,000 exhibits that date from the 15th to the 19th centuries, it contains the largest collection of historic weaponry in the world. Of particular note are the coats of chainmail for the women and the fully preserved coats of chainmail for the battle horses. The often extended Grazeberg was once the resident of the Habsburgs. One of its towers contains a unique double spiral Gothic staircase constructed of sandstone that shines out magnificently in a wonderful array of color. In 1438, Duke Friedrich ordered that a castle be built outside the city wall. This entire complex, along with each of its numerous building styles and adjoining park, is now the seat of Styria's provincial government. When the Minorites were forced to hand over their first church to the Franciscans, they were allocated an area on the river's right bank, upon which the Minorites' monastery was built. Later, the Maria Hilf Parsonage was founded, which eventually became a place of pilgrimage due to the miracles that were said to have taken place there. As the order's younger members were in decline, since 1978, Slovenian monks have maintained both monastery and church. From the cloister of the Minorite Monastery, a staircase leads up to the former monk's dormitory that now contains the well-equipped diocesan museum. Sacred treasures from various Styrian parsonages are exhibited here. Figures of saints, valuable church furnishings and old paintings. Those who come here can learn of the care and preservation of ecclesiastical monuments the life of various saints and the mysteries of Jesus Christ. The most spectacular project of this cultural capital of 2003 is situated in front of the Minorites Monastery, amid the River Muir, a conchy island. The famous New York artist Vito Acconci created this cultural center that connects Maria Hilf with the old town. Two halves of a floating shell contain an amphitheater that seats 300 and also a cafe. In 1811, the Archduke Johann donated the Johannium Museum to the local community and also gifted his personal collections as the basis of the exhibition.
The splendid Lambrachterhof was the ideal setting for the 16 exhibition areas that once formed the largest museum in Austria. In the lower arcades, there is a collection of ancient stone reliefs that contain various motifs. Numerous collections of minerals provide a visual explanation of the history of the earth. Indeed, they show how its landscape was created. Various replicas of the animals that once lived in this area in primeval times offer a fascinating insight into this region's colorful past. Some rooms contain display cases full of the region's minerals and among the exhibits there are some striking items. Emperor Friedrich III had this Gothic cathedral built in 1438 as both a church for the city's inhabitants and also for the royal court. It is located next to the castle. Since 1573, this impressive Jesuit church has been at the center of the Counter-Reformation. After the dissolution of the Jesuit order and the bishop's see in Sekau in 1786, the building became Styria's main bishop's church. The magnificent late Baroque altar, the imposing pulpit, and the Rococo-style organ are only a few of the many treasures of this religious building. As with the castle, the cathedral also contains the emperor's motto, Austria est imperare orbe universo. Next to the cathedral, Archduke Ferdinand II ordered the construction of a mausoleum, an imposing architectural monument of mannerism design, the transition between Renaissance and Baroque. Although as emperor, he had no alternative but to reside with his court in Vienna, Ferdinand's final place of rest was in his hometown of Graz. Since 1995, this futuristic Volker Ginke style building has graced the landscape of the Botanical Garden in the campus of the University of Graz. Each of the adjoining glass cylinders contains four zones, a warm house, cold house, temperate house, and a succulent house. Due to the arrangement of the glass houses and their vaulted glass surfaces, their interiors let in no less than 98% of available sunlight, a remarkable achievement.
gangways and bridges located on various levels provide visitors with excellent views of both the architecture and the vegetation. Located on a hill to the northeast, there is another fine example of Baroque architecture, the Maria Trost Basilica. In the 17th century, those who sought help and consolation climbed 215 steps to a Gothic Madonna who was thought to possess miraculous powers. Within the interior of the church and its colourful wall and ceiling-mounted frescoes, there are also various scenes of battle. The magnificent pulpit is the focal point of the church and was created by Veit Koeniger. The frescoes on the dome feature the Holy Virgin as consolation of the world and as her glorification on earth. Today, the high altar continues to display the gold-framed Madonna that dates back to 1465. The side altars were donated by various noble dynasties. Franciscan monks have maintained the cathedral since 1846 as both a place of pilgrimage and a parsonage that is now also used for wedding ceremonies. In 1623, King Johann Ulrich von Eggenberg built in the west of the city a castle that was a symbol of power, Schloss Eggenberg. Four towers denote each season of the year, 12 gates each month and 365 windows each day. Austria's largest and most splendid castle was built in mannerism style. The arcades of its huge inner courtyards lead into various rooms of both Baroque and Rococo design. The model for this splendid complex was the residence of the Spanish monarchy, the Escorial, no casa, a castle like no other on earth. A unique collection of archaeological discoveries dates back to early history and includes a large number of exhibits common to this region. The most treasured centerpiece of the collection is one of the most important finds that dates back to Hallstatt times a bronze wagon of worship that is believed to date back to the 6th century BC. Each of these discoveries highlights the prehistorical development of a city that, even now, is the gateway to Southeast Europe. 
a city in which the artistic and architectural styles of the German-speaking nations, the Balkans and the Mediterranean are united. Graz, a city of age-old traditions, medieval flair and contemporary life. <laughs>